Hello there, great person, and welcome back to Let's Dive into Warhammer 40k. I've moved, I have not yet set up my green screen, so I'm sorry for the weird background. Uh, I think we will make due perfectly nonetheless. Um, so today we're going back to the orcs, which is something I promised, and I thought, why not uh, start live in a new flat here with a video about our favorite uh, mushroom creatures. Or fungus, fungi, you know what I mean. Uh, anyway, uh, this one is the one by Lutin. You requested it after the last video was not that deep and I didn't learn a lot about the orcs. And uh, we will just see what this one will have for us. And uh, I hope you enjoy it and have some fun. And as always, if you enjoy the video I'm reacting to here, uh, please go to Lutin's channel, subscribe to him, like this video, of course, and watch it first uh, at his channel and after that. Of course, watch my reaction as well and uh, like subscribe here as well because we're almost at 2000 people, which is the year's goal. And we might actually smash that in April, which would be so dope. So uh, let's let's hope we do that. <laughs> anyway, let's just go get into the, the video and have some fun with orcs and wark, I guess. So let's go. Okay, here we are. Let's uh, dive into some orc lore. Um, ah, good old Lutin, I've missed you. There is only walk! Or so I've heard multiple times. The orcs are the pinnacle of creation. Wait, for them, the great struggle is won. They have evolved a society which knows no stress or angst. Ah, that's good. So they are not teenagers. Perfect. Who are we to judge them? We elder who have failed of the humans on the... I'm sorry. I, I actually want to read that. We elder who have failed of the humans on the road to ruin in their turn. And why? Because we'd sought answers to questions an org wouldn't even bother to ask. We see a culture that is strong and despise it as crude. And it was said by a youth in the perverse, the elder philosopher. The great elder philosopher. Yeah, I don't know who that is. Is that like someone I should know or is it just a random name they drop here? Um, yeah, before we start, something else I wanted to say about the orgs. Um, when I watched the last lore video on the orcs, this short one, which was not very deep, um, I got the impression that they were a lot of fun. And then I watched Hell's Reach and it was just terrifying what they did. So let's see what they really are. Oh, I like the I like the music as well. I hope it doesn't. Yeah. Ooh, we've got an orc. That is augmented. Orcs are one of the most fearsome, savage, insidious, and most well-established races in the 41st millennium. Oh yeah. They lack any empathy even toward their own race, and they exist as a genetically engineered creation of instinct and a DNA-coded sense of purpose. Yeah. They are created for one task and one collective goal only. To wage unending war. Yeah. War! War. History and physiology. By the way, it makes sense, and I'm not gonna pause as much this time. I, I promise I try. Um, it's very cool that because they are fungi, that makes sense that they don't have empathy. Why would a fungus have empathy? It makes no sense. Love it. Love it. Let's go. The Orcs are one of the older races in the 41st millennium, along with the Eldar, being created by the Old Ones. Ooh, yes. The then Croc They're would later player. become what are now known as the Race of Orcs. The Eldar were a higher form of design with them possessing many levels of high intelligence. The Orcs are their exact opposite, working on pure genetic instinct. Yeah, if, 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 if one thing like the Eldar doesn't work, you just take the opposite and throw it at your enemy. 
yeah, that, that will work, sure. Orcs and greenskins in general, though, are not born oh, from God. sexual reproduction. Ah, they're they are the grown mushroom. from spores. An orc shroom. And all so orcs are grown from these same <laughs> spores <laughs> and fungus, be they lowly snotlings and gretchen or full blown orc warriors. They are called snotlings, <laughs> orc embryo, febros, and bilicarn. <laughs> they are just trolling me around, they. Sun? Rock? <laughs> surface shrooms. <laughs> oh god, this is so stupid. Orc fungus. I mean, isn't that stupid already? I love it. <laughs> I love it. This, oh my god, I hope that is their, that is their original entry in the um, history books. Once a planet becomes infected with orc fungus, either by chance or invasion, it'll likely never be free again, having to forever defend against the unrelenting green menace. So this like infection terminates? is often likened to something like a terminal disease. Once a world is contaminated, it will surely be a case of when, not if, it will eventually wither and die. Orcs are enemies to all throughout the galaxy, but despite their crude and instinctive driven nature, they should never be underestimated. Never. Defense to an orc assault can seem almost hopeless from the outset for some <laughs> <human> <laughs> world. With all their strength and power that they can wield, to fight the orcs is nothing other than a battle of attrition. A slow yeah. grinding down of morale and willpower. Yeah. For a successful defense against any assault from the Greenskins only buoys their spirits and emboldens them further to attack again with more fury and more enthusiasm. So, please answer in the comments if you would be so kind. Was there another assault on Hell's Reach after the one I witnessed, like the, the Hell's Reach uh, reaction I did? Like, after that, was there another orc invasion again? They won't relent, they won't slow or surrender. There is no respite, there is no escape. A planet infected by the orc menace is a doomed world. Orcs possess a powerful genetic sense of being to fight, to conquer, and to never surrender under any circumstances. Their strategies, if you could call them that, are usually unsurprisingly simple and unashamedly direct. To overwhelm the enemy with sheer weight of numbers or absolute weapon superiority, to never show their enemies mercy, to smash and obliterate all who oppose them under an unrelenting green tide of ultra violence. They wage yeah. war with machines that defy oh, that logic cool. and technical understanding, and they care little for strategic gain, are seen to be just as likely to slaughter one another as they are the <laughs> Sorry, but he looks so happy. Look at him with his gun, with his little flag thing, the standard. Is that called it? I don't know. It is a weird grenade tank thing, and he's like, Whoa, I'm gonna kill you! It's so good! So good to see you! I'm gonna kill you! The enemy, but most especially if an enemy is in their sights. Orcs are often reported to, for example, skewer one another with swords and other melee weapons just so as to gain a killing blow to an opponent crush their kin with their own vehicles with little if any regard and use heavy weaponry without thought to such a thing as friendly casualties. Yeah, Imperial peachy. forces are often left to wonder how does one battle an enemy that defies all logic? Yes. And their answer oh. is usually exterminatus. <laughs> just nuke the shit out of them. Just nuke them. Don't care anymore. Just nuke them. <laughs> It's like, it's like ultimate pest control, this exterminatus thing, right? I know I promised you a reaction to exterminatus, I will do it soon, but yeah, it's so funny, like, oh, orcs, exterminatus, oh, tyrannus, oh, yeah, yeah, exterminatus, exterminatus, oh, Horus was heretical, ex exterminatus, that is uh, Lionel, apparently. That looks sick, like, whole world's burning. Rip world that I don't know. The orcs, as mentioned previously, are an engineered species. Yeah, hit they that were created all. some 60 million years ago by the Old Ones, who also created the Eldar and seeded life across the galaxy. 
The Orcs were created, as were the Eldar, to wage war against the Necrons, the ancient enemy and the of Satan. the Old Ones. And the Orcs would refer to their creators as the Brain Boys. <laughs> what? Now, while the Eldar were made to be highly intelligent with extremely powerful psychic powers so as to best counter the Necron and Catan threat, the Orcs, then Krork, however, were the antithesis of the Eldar. Muscle-bound, irrationally aggressive, and rarely showing signs of advanced intelligence. Just They're hit them. driven by designed instinct. Orcs, you see, require war and brutality, as others might need food and water to sustain them. To an orc, war and brutal savagery is not a desire, it's a physical requirement to their identity. <laughs> I now just realized why they were so adamant on, on, on conquering Hellthreat and probably other stuff. They just wanted to eat. They just wanted to eat their war. Like it was a war buffet. Like, why not, why not go there? Not, why not eat the war? And this is why they often fight amongst themselves. <laughs> so, so it's like, it's, it's like this fat kid going to, a, to seeing a big cake and going, cake! And they go, war! I, I'm, I'm sorry, that was a bit mean, but, you as know. As much as they would any outside races. While they do possess <laughs> advanced tech, it is maintained by a class known as Odd Boys, who, as with all other orcs, are driven more by just a gut feeling, a born knowledge, than a true how, how awareness do they maintain of what it? Hitting doing. it with screwdrivers? Unlike the Imperium of the 41st Probably. Millennium, the Odd Boys possess the instinct of skill to not only maintain, but more importantly, to actually develop technology, if you can really call develop. it such. This skill isn't learned or researched by any conventional sense of tech development. It's instead bound into their genetics. As with all things Orc, most of their skills are instinctive. The best way to really envisage this is for them to just smash things together until by some miracle it just works. I don't even know if it just works. Isn't it just that they believe in it? And then it works. It's not like it's not chance. It's like they just believe, oh, this doesn't work I, because I believe it doesn't work. This doesn't work because I believe it doesn't work. Oh, I believe this works now. Yeah, great. A kind of deadly galactic scrap heap challenge, if you will. Orcs don't possess any random evolutionary psychic powers as humans might. And say, you know, evolutionary, Ooh, that looks cool. if it's the old ones which have seeded life, perhaps it's by design. But nonetheless, the psychic power with orcs is comically random and again being by design from their creators the old ones this bizarre psychic power allows for orcs to literally will something to be true yes. that if just enough of them believe it then it will be so for example the classic painting their war machines a certain color may imbue it with a power like being more powerful with explosives or just to go faster. Yes, just because I've, I've enough orcs that. will believe it to be so with the proximity of numbers of them means it will become a reality. Oh, this enables orcs to achieve things like space travel, beautiful. even controlling space hulks and bringing them into real space under orc modified control. A terrifying oh. thought. Wow. As well as bringing huge. I'm sorry to interrupt here. Is space hulk, isn't that a. Is that a space marine ship? I know there is. Um... The game Space Hulk Deathwing, and we will play that soon because I have it. I've never really played it. I think I've played Start Mission and whatever. But uh, yeah, so I think a Space Hulk is isn't that the ship the Space Marines use, or is it the class of ships? It's probably the ship class, isn't it? Like a, a battle battleship, like an, another name for battleship. Huge war machines to a battlefield. All of these things, by all rational logic, should be outside their realm of skill and possibility. And this genetic trait is also why orc technology, whilst essentially being just a random collection of things smashed together, will become devastatingly fearsome war machines in the hands of orcs, but then would just as easily return to being useless junk in the hands of other races. It's a yeah. clever solution to the threat of your war gear falling into the hands of an enemy. And again, this is by design of the old ones. Yeah, that makes so much sense. If you fight the Necrons, uh, you wouldn't like, they would probably like be like Box or whatever, just assimilate your technology. But if your technology doesn't work, and we know, I think if I remember that the Necrons don't really have 
connections to the warp in the way other races have and uh, the orcs have great connections to whatever they do when they think up stupid shit um so it's pretty pretty effective i like that conversely though if orc numbers dwindle then it can be potentially counterproductive unlike other races who can wield immense power reliably even in singular or small numbers, any number of examples would suit from, say, Imperial Assassins to Grey Knights and Eldar Wraith Knights. The more or less what of their own race knight? will not have a bearing on their success, their strength or their functionality of their tech. Not so much with the Orcs. The awareness of this Orc psychic functionality came into general understanding through the Imperium of Man's tech priests who oh. through their own cultivated belief in a machine spirit that inhabits technology yeah. and that this machine spirit it's serves mankind the same. and the command of it's the machine the god. This imbued yeah. them with a perspective and point of reference that enabled them to see the truth of how orcs were able to bring technology to the fore that should have been far out of their reach. Lastly, the orc race's anatomy is particularly interesting. The Why? old ones obviously wanted the orcs or croc to be functional as a warrior race, a biological war machine. But before you have the ability to wage war, you still have to fulfill any life form's basic needs, like sustenance, food, water, the basics of life. Yeah. The old ones in their wisdom <laughs> imbued the orcs with a powerful genetic advantage here on top of their already many they powerful genetic sun. traits. For one, when it comes to food and liquid intake, the orcs can use their own growing fungus as a food source. They'll happily eat pretty much anything though when it comes to meat. And Great. the lower orc forms of snotlings will cultivate this fungus food. No. <laughs> you can't tell me those are real. That looks so beyond stupid, but I love it. I'm gonna go back a bit. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Look at that. what the fuck is that? what the fuck is that one? The Gretchen, which is by the name in German name Gretchen, like almost the same. Snotling, this is like a di Digimon, like Snotling Digivolves to Gretchen, Gretchen Digivolves to Org Murderer. <laughs> what the frick is this? He also looks so happy with his stupid head. Like, is the head grown as well? Do they grow their clothing? Or what's the deal with that? Like, like he's got an eye patch. Did that eye patch grow into this weird helmet? It's, it's like a Pokemon or Digimon. It's so stupid. I love it. Fungus food. The more interesting elements of their biology oh. is that orcs really are something like a symbiotic Oracle animal snacker. fungus hybrid, Orc. making them partly eukaryotic in nature. Now, fungus was historically part of the plant kingdom, but fungi lack chlorophyll, the green pigment in plants that converts light energy to chemical energy. Yeah. They also have other distinct structural and physiological features and are so classed separately from plants. Now, it has been suggested that orcs green skin and their blood could directly contain chlorophyll so as to allow orcs to actually Perhaps. photosynthesize as a plant does and thereby provide orcs with some energy so they can survive longer without actual food. Now, holy shit, that is the best idea for why orcs are in general green that I've ever heard. That makes so much sense. I've never heard that idea, but I love it. Like also in fantasy it would work. Like it would work in every orc um, thing where orcs are. Like it doesn't have to be in 40k. It's just like orcs are always green. Why? Because they're like fungi. It's so... Oh, I love that. I, I didn't think of that. I didn't think of that. That's so brilliant. Oh, God, I love the lore. Makes so much sense as well. Like, oh, this is so brilliant. I love it. The only problem, this makes absolutely no sense for the reasons that I just mentioned. Fungi don't have chlorophyll. So if orcs grow yeah, and were cultivated as a plant-based life form, in part, this would actually be more reasonable. But they're not. They're grown from fungi. So apparently the generator Magos biologists of the Imperium should actually do some more microscopic comparisons before they reach their conclusions. 
However, it's also suggested that orcs in their blood and bodies may contain some sort of algae, and that this ah, might be actually that, what's yeah. responsible for the coloration, and then also possibly the ability to photosynthesize to a degree. Yeah, that, that's like that's okay. I mean, I get that. That's he's he's right here on that point. But I mean, in general, linking orcs with plants is I like that. I've never thought about it. Like I thought about it now. I love it. But that's cool. That's very good. This is a more reasonable concept, but as with all alien races, information is pretty scarce and yeah. speculation is abound. I so love this these. One point aside, I love these uh, pseudo biological uh, um, paintings. Like they look like the paintings they did when they didn't have photographs. Like when they painted the or the organs of uh, people they uh, like dug up for science when they were not allowed to and stuff. Um, yeah, I, I I really like that. Um, and um, what I think is uh, very cool is uh, people who who do these um, mock drawings like this one here. I mean, this could be real. I really like the way it's drawn. And I once went to an art exhibit at our local um, university arts department, and there was this guy, and he drew. Um, animals that could have evolved but they were none of them were real but he um, drew them in the way uh, a scientist would drew them that was cataloging stuff like this one like this drawing and there was actually an evolutionary biologist uh, that came to his uh, thing and he was like are those new new because it was so realistically drawn because uh, the student who drew the stuff was also a biologist i think in a second major and he just made it so realistic and i, I love this like this looks so realistic and um, I just hope that there is more like this. So if, if you know if there are more like these drawings of the orcs, I love them. It's very, very cool stuff. It looks very, very cool. And it deepens the um, immersion a lot. And I absolutely love things like this. But let's uh, continue. Other orc anatomical interests are that an orc's animal fungal symbiosis means that they actually contain less critical organs than, say, a human meaning yeah. orcs can afford to take wounds and damage that actually might kill a lesser creature. They probably can lose allow their them heads. to continue functioning. Part of the reason they are so uh, surely so disgusting when in battle, almost careless, is their bodies are essentially designed to be simple, practical, and oh, operate yeah. even when catastrophically that, damaged, yeah, that, which rings true of everything you know about their purpose painful. and their design. They were designed to be a biological war machine and nothing more. Orc growth, though, is a strange thing, whereby orcs will grow according to, I suppose, unsurprisingly, how violent they are. They'll generally continue to grow at a varying rate, dependent on how successful they are in combat, be that versus other orcs or their enemies, and then their growth will stagnate again. Yeah, of course, because they eat. Why is it called Kultur? Like, that's German. Why is it in German? Kultur is German. It's culture. Um, yeah, so that was the introduction, I guess. I really like that. Like, I mean, you saw me react. It is very, very nicely thought up. Like, the lore is pretty, pretty deep. I didn't think it was that deep. And I really like the idea of fungi. And I also like the idea of uh, the Eldar being their opposite in that the Eldar are the ultimate consciousness. And the uh, orcs are like something like the ultimate subconsciousness with instinct of, of, of war. And they eat with battle, like that's their nutrition, and it makes sense that the biggest orcs had the most battles and stuff. I love it, it's so cool. But let's get into their culture, <laughs> whatever. Orcs live across a wide and scattered number of worlds throughout the galaxy, some in a state of war, some in endless skirmishes, and some dominating worlds ruling them as overlords, with often human slaves obeying their brutal command. Oh, the great. orcs' expansion was really an accident, as best known in orc history. Of course it was. This is why even now their settlements are often random with no real pattern, focus or direction. The Eldar so claim orcs have become part of reality itself. Mankind as well ah, interesting. scouted, probed the galaxy, all of the known galaxy, and everywhere that they explored, they found the orc. <laughs> the galaxy at this point is contaminated beyond any <laughs> hopes of cleansing and Wah! salvaging it from the orc. Because of the random and haphazard fashion Wah, in which everywhere. orcs discover, explore, and inhabit the galaxy, they have splintered into various communities. 
if you want to call them that. These communities are usually just a confederacy of tribes, either loosely or under a warlord. Why does he have a pirate head? Like, why? <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> so random. It's so random. They live up to their hype so much. It's so random. Such random shit. I love it. It's so stupid. Each tribe is a random Let's bunch go. of orcs just Let's smashed just together go. with clans and various mechs and materials. It's a mishmash of violence and constructivity. It's best not to overthink it. It bears yeah, no resemblance to any ordered sense of a community or a society. Orcs have known of mankind and their emperor for some time. They know that humans worship the emperor and have seen the shrines and symbols across human society. They regard the emperor as the god of the humans. And this is easy for yeah. us to understand as they have their own gods. Even though they see humans as weak, they do respect the Emperor as a powerful war god. Yeah. From the Orc point of view, the Emperor is a constant warlord to the humans. They see him everywhere in human society. And so to the Orcs, this widespread war god must surely be powerful. Yeah, and therefore makes sense. Respected. Yeah, makes sense. The Orcs speak of a legend where the Emperor would appear as a manifestation challenging the Orc gods to battle. But still, Despite this, he's also seen to the orcs as a confusing figure. Why he would command his human servants to take on so many pointless tasks when they could be just fighting makes no sense to yeah, the orcs. Yeah, The human's constant failures no or their stress and despair seems to underline this confusion for orcs. Hence why they often use the word uman as a slang for things that are pointless, impractical, or just counterproductive. The orcs' <laughs> attitude to life is fairly simple and therefore they cope with the realities of the universe great, far better than many other races. With no overarching goals and day-to-day -day concerns being really only whether to build or fight or eat, it's quite a stress-free life. Especially when you have no fear of your own mortality fighting, so. from an orc's point of view. Generally speaking, they don't try to influence their own destiny, they don't try to apportion blame unless it's some stupid Gretchen looking to get his head bashed in. Their hatred is spread Rich. equal among their enemies Jesus and their Christ. allies, and if they fail, they feel no guilt. Try again in a different way. Unlike humanity, Chaos has little to any fear or effect with orcs. Their minds are hardwired to their simple day-to-day -day activities, so dreams of power and turning against each other for some cause is not something that's likely to spread very insidiously through a tribe of orcs. They're but shouldn't corn also be linked with them? Like, should, I, I know they have their own gods, but why is Korn not their god? Is it like, what's happening there? Is that another thing? I, I don't get that. If anyone knows, let me know. Probably too busy already killing each other over some far more trivial matter. And because of their simple and objectively speaking stress-free lifestyle, it leaves little psychic stress by which chaos can actually invade them. Yeah. Just, just eat also, and kill. even though some races may look upon the orcs as evil, either due to their near mindless savagery or their endless conquest of worlds, this is actually a pretty ignorant perspective. Lumping orcs in alongside dark forces like Chaos or Dark Elder is really a disservice to the orcs because they exist by design and they have become simply very effective at existing. They follow yeah. their instincts and these are hard coded into their very being. Evil. I don't think so, but brutally savage, definitely. Yeah, that that is true. I mean, there was someone in the comments, I think, once who said that, yeah, it's, it's so easy to say they're not evil. Of course they're evil. No, they're not evil. They're just like, it's, it's like a, an animal attacking you is not evil. It's just doing what it's programmed to do. Like, it's horrifying and bad, but not evil. Like, there's a difference between bad and evil. You know what I mean? So orcs are bad, but not evil. And perhaps sometimes they're not bad. But um, like, you know, there's a difference because I think evil, evil has needs intent behind it. Like the Drukari are evil because they just want to make people and things suffer. That's clearly evil. But if you don't have the intent behind it, like if that's not your sole intent to make others suffer and kill them, to make them suffer, like if it's just like... Uh, yeah, that's, uh, like they are, they are programmed to do that. The, the question also is how intelligent are they? Like they can talk, but as a wise Jedi once said, the ability to talk does not make you intelligent. So it's very complicated, I think. It's also often mistaken that perhaps if one were to see chaos 
and orc fighting on the same battlefield that they are somehow an alliance. In reality, it's probably more simply that the orcs just see them as other fighters on the field who they'll probably turn to deal with in short order yeah, once course. the nearer enemy to them has been battered into submission. I would, pro the, you know, I know nothing, you know that, but I would assume that they would just go like if there's uh, the, the group, K let, let's say Chaos Space Marines versus Space Marines, Space Marines, Chaos Space Marines, Orcs, they just go to who is closer and just more them, like, why not? And when it comes to trade, Orcs strangely do have this as part of their culture. How? And they use their teeth, literally their teeth. Oh yeah, it's I remember that. It's actually a comically that. natural solution to economic inflation, because Orcs go through their teeth similarly to something like a shark. They replace and regrow them frequently. Orc teeth also degrade over time, so it's impossible to stockpile them. This keeps prices in Orc trading constant and ensures that all Orcs have access to regular currency and commodities. And besides, if you're running mm, short on teeth, interesting. it's no problem. You can just go smash some other orc's face in and get yourself some more. Pretty orc language great. is deemed as being low gothic. And orcs are able to communicate with others, but at a very basic level. Orc script, though, is very different altogether, and it's actually written in glyphs. The core okay. of this is simple clan indicators. Okay, let's go. Drek means destroy, rip, cut, break, up, take apart. Thing is mutant. Fung is drop, food. Dor, fortress, stronghold. Is, that sounds a bit like, uh, like it's from dwarves. Bagai is an alien gene stealer or tyrannid. I mean, yeah, that makes sense. Is there something stupid here? No. No, it's not, nothing, nothing stupid. And these are then adapted using phonetic symbols, which can form some of the key orc words. Cruiser. It's simple though, because it's just generally not needed by the orc race. They function by design, not structure or organization. They have no need to keep records, log data, or any other useful societal function for writing and literature. <laughs> okay, I found something stupid. Nerd. <laughs> Unlucky. And look at the sad face, sad face. These aren't important for orcs. Oh man. The orc way is one of near anarchy. They're ruled by traditions and understandings much more than laws and governing. And it's pretty simple. Orc society is about conflict. Strong orcs will rise up, weak ones will work or are killed. And they in turn benefit from the leadership of the stronger orcs. If an orc tribe is beaten by a stronger one, the survivors gain the leadership of a better tribe making them stronger. Yeah. There's no rules about a tribe's size, location, or purpose. It's just the rough grouping of orcs in a given area at a given time. And each is led by a warlord whose authority is pretty loose. I really wonder if you could create a computer program. Like, I know there are these simulation programs where you make little populations of things and give them some basic rules and see what how they evolve and what structures come out. I wonder if you could do this with the orcs. Like, this seems pretty simple uh, in rules. Like, you pro could probably do that and simulate how orc distribution among a galaxy was and how, how uh, stable their population sizes were and stuff like that. That would be very interesting. So if, if anyone has done that, please let me know. That, that would be cool. Giving just maybe enough rule to prevent all the orcs from turning on each other. A tribe could be a few hundred strong, a few million. The literal numbers are not important. Large tribes are usually split into smaller groups of warbands which are ruled by war bosses. And these warbands are usually a few hundred strong creating smaller forces ready to battle wherever it's necessary or whenever they feel like it. While orcs will belong to a tribe, they also will belong to a clan. Now a tribe okay. may break apart into parts or form new ones, but clans are enduring and remain a reasonable constant from an orc point of view. Some of the most How? noted orc clans are as How follows. Though? Now the bad moons, these are some of the most wealthy orcs. They're essentially what could be regarded as the merchant caste in orc society. The Blood Axes were the first orc clan to encounter the oh, Imperium of cool. Man, and they adopted human tactics of camouflage, albeit slightly bright camouflage. And usually for <laughs> orcs, they'll sometimes actually retreat, having picked this up also from humans, but they'll usually return, and in greater numbers. Yeah. This clan will sometimes even trade with humans, even having been known to work as mercenaries for them, which sounds crazy, but maybe uncomfortably necessary. Yeah. Death Skulls are essentially looters and scavengers. They appropriate battlefield loot to make themselves stronger 
including Imperial War Gear. So do they take the War Gear and then believe it's better and then make it even better perhaps even? That, was, that will be so interesting. The evil sons are orcs who are committed to speed and whatever makes them go fast should be as loud as possible. They also love flying vehicles like fighters, that fighter bombers, so stupid. and they usually I love seem it. to wear at least some red material, because as all orcs do know, red ones go faster. Yeah. The, goths, the goths are simply tough orcs. They're the biggest, the most brutal, they thrive on battle more so than others, and they're driven by the blood fury of close quarter battle. Snake bites worship ancient traditions over advanced tech. They protect themselves with war paint and may even choose to remain as feral orcs instead of developing their skills with mechs and guns. That's so cool. Finally, the freebooters. These are the pirates. These orcs are notorious thieves preying upon anything or anyone that they find. They'll kill anybody they see. They'll seize upon, haul their booty back to their hidden bases. So now we go to orc religion. Whether intentional oh, yeah. or not, the old ones ended up imbuing the orc with a religious sensibility. Yeah, obviously because they're instinctual. Like, like as far as we know, religions arise from um, very, very rough traditions to um, to make sure that they are given to the next generations because they are just like a summary of things that worked. So you can give that to your um, to the people that come after you. And I guess uh, it's a very, very low level, um, 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 low level structure that develops. Like it, and with that, I mean, it is, uh, it, um, is very close to instinct develop, like that, that develops. So it makes a lot of sense that orcs develop religion. So they work pretty well read, gods, written again. Orc and Mork. One Pork is and brutal Mork. and cunning, and the other is cunning and brutal. The orc gods are of the course. center of orc energy. They drive and power their whole culture. The best idea we have of how the orcs perceive their gods is in their mechs. These are the physical manifestation of their orc gods and drive their followers into stupefying frenzies of violence and bloodlust. Really? They're also seen in armored battle suits Gorkonaut and Morknaut. These armoured suits are seen as idols, and the orcs piloting these suits gripped with visions of their gods, urging them to fight on harder, faster, more brutally, and inevitably to meet their demise on the battlefield. Are there only two of these suits, or are those just general suits that some legions or clans or yeah, clans probably have? Or are there two, and they are like the ultimate things? Um, I didn't get that one. Like, I didn't understand that, so... While orcs often talk of Gork, and Mork as separate entities, it's even possible they are one, perhaps with two sides, or provide different visions. To it's clearly a, uh, what's it called? An ogre from World of Warcraft, like with two heads. It's just a god with two heads, I bet. Different orcs. Still, it doesn't stop the orcs from often favoring one or the other, being known as either Gorkers or Morkers. One figure in the Imperium knows more of Gork and Mork than most others. He is Vulcan, the Primarch of the Salamanders. He oh, is what's known okay, as yeah. a perpetual in the 40k universe. Essentially, he's an immortal. He can regenerate from almost any injury, really? even something like being vaporized. So how is he get how is he gone? I know he's gone. I know there's only a Gilliman and a Lionel, so how why is he not there? Does it take time to regenerate? Vulcan disappeared after the Horus Heresy. Yeah, I know. And he would appear some 1500 years later on the Imperial world of Caldera okay. to aid in defending it against a massive orc invasion. Now, though he died many times over, he would regenerate and appear again on the front lines. Yeah, of course. The Imperial Inquisition requested he lead a mission to destroy the orc war boss known as the Beast. Ah. But Vulcan refused until Caldera was saved. With the aid of Imperial forces, Vulcan saved Caldera from destruction and would return to Terra, gathering an Imperial force to Ulanor, to the homeworld of the Beast. Vulcan would lead the final charge into the Beast's yes. massive Temple Gargant, confronting that the looks Warboss so badass. there. During a powerful struggle, the Primarch and the Warboss would fall into the Gargant's power generator, and Vulcan created the detonation in the generator so powerful it killed not only the Beast, but a massive chain reaction shattering the temple Gargant and obliterating them. Vulcan presumed dead by the Imperium, but the Salamander Space Marines still hunt for him, believing him indestructible and that he will return to them. Okay, so that one's gonna come back as well. Can't tell me like, okay, he was vaporized, but he just said 
if he's vaporized, he will come back. It's probably taking some more time, or perhaps he is. Um, I don't know, but I'm pretty sure he's gonna come back down the line. Because I I don't know. It just feel like it just feels like it. I I don't know. Because that's not something that like that would be just so easy to to do. Like that you just say okay, he has reformed, or perhaps they find him reforming on a planet and they have to defend him until he is reformed against waves of orcs and um i don't or, or waves of something and then he's in the end reborn and then he comes back and smashes the attackers and is back and yeah i don't know let me know what you think and the point of this story was what vulcan would witness in the heart of the orc gargant when exposed to its powerful generator he yes, witnessed the what? raw energy that was the culmination of all the orcs warg and he would witness the origins of the orcs and their gods Gork and Mork battling one another at the beginning of time. Ooh, His powerful vision allowed Vulcan to understand the true nature of the orcs, how they are a race of evolution through experimental anarchy. Very cool. Okay, so I'm gonna read that. I'm the hand of Gorker and Mork. They sent me to rouse up the boys to crush and kill because the boys forgot uh, what they are for. I was one of the boys till the gods smashed me in the, the, the head. And I remembered that orcs is meant to conquer and make walk boys of everything they don't kill. I, 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 don't, I don't know. It's, it's from Gazgul, Gaz, 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 whatever. Sorry. <laughs> Yeah, let's just enjoy the music. Walk! Walk! Now, the orcs have been an ever-existing threat to the Imperium of Man, but towards the end of the 41st millennium... Oh no, millennium, that poor sword. <laughs> Look at that poor sword, he's just like... Guess I'll die. <laughs> it's been seen an explosion <laughs> in Orc Warg. Now, the Orc Dominion, or Empire, marks the regions in the galaxy currently controlled by the Xenos. Some planets are now completely controlled by the Orc race, where others are in an unending state of brutal, nightmarish and near hopeless war. Great. Orcs have been heard to keep under control some of the local populace, creating a prison workforce who are kept in unbearable, exhausting and dangerous conditions, abiding by their uncaring savage slave masters. Most of these prisoners will be unlikely to ever know any other life than being subject now to the Orcs' brutal will. The orcs will at any time also control random isolated worlds as well as rampaging hordes that sweep through the galaxy battling all that they encounter. They also have been found inhabiting ancient space hulks. Oh. Now as an aside, a space hulk is simply a term given by the Imperium of Man to any ancient wrecks of space vessels. Oh. Okay, you don't have to answer it in the comments anymore, I got my answer here. So it's a wreckage. It probably is not only a wreckage of space marine um, battleships, then it's probably all wreckage. Ah, I see, I see. That's, ah, that's so cool. There are so many story possibilities that could go with that. These hulks are no mere freighters or even warships, but giant ancient vessels, possibly from the early exploration of mankind wow. or even lost in the Age of Strife. Great. They can be so massive to play as game. to even maintain their own gravity, or in rare cases, atmosphere. The hulks can often wow. appear and disappear, transitioning between the warp and normal space. That sounds a lot like the Event Horizon. Would the Event Horizon be a, uh, a, a space hulk if they found it again? Is it still teleporting around? I think it is. Like, I know it's not... Some people say it's Warhammer, some people don't say it isn't, but uh, yeah. Oh, and by the way, I will react to it, even though I watched it like 16 years ago, but I forgot some stuff, so I just, will just react to it, and you can have some fun there, with me being a bit terrified, probably. This makes exploring them extremely dangerous. As well as orcs, they often can host other dangers like the vile Xenos oh. Tyranids Hello. who have been found often Hello, using friend. these hulks as breeding grounds for their gene stealers. Even Chaos Space Marines can sometimes be found there, either searching for ancient tech or preparing to launch hidden attacks against the Imperium. 
While there is great potential reward in searching a space hulk, there is also immense danger, coupled with the ambient danger of the own hulk's instability. You know what? That would make for such a cool movie. Like that would be that could be a movie they could start with, I think. Like perhaps not, perhaps down the line, but that a space hulk, like like it's it's they they, they get the signals from the space hulk somehow. Perhaps someone who's a psyker or so gets them and he will see the space, uh, uh, this ancient space hawk and everyone prepares to battle there uh, where it will appear and then suddenly it appears and some ships are sucked in and then they explore the thing and uh, there are battles between the races that entered it and then in the end they uh, find one of these AI printers or something or a part of it and they will then they will have to race and get some information out of it before it disappears again into the void or something like that like that would be a cool movie as such searching these vessels is left to the elite warriors of the imperium and the space marines yeah the space marine terminators they're terminators. heavily armored units within a space marine chapter and their ancient terminator armor enables them to carry out the extremely dangerous task of searching the hulks now, humans have explored extensively in the 41st millennium I need and they to have found play the space to inhabit Hulk every game. corner of the galaxy and this seems Whoa. unlikely to change now or in the future the orcs Fenris are not a race Alaric. of reason or diplomacy or even needs. they exist as a genetically engineered creation of instinct and a dna coded sense of being they spread across the galaxy more like a plague than conquerors this plague of war is often referred to as the warg Orc conflicts usually will remain localized to their own planets, or objectively speaking, small raids to worlds inhabited by other races or other orc or pirate-like raids on passing ships. Again, as with most things that orcs do, there's usually not a grand plan here, so don't overthink it. Yeah. Warg, though, is a different happening altogether. When oh, numbers of orcs reach really? a critical mass, they feel a need to migrate to form a crusade of apocalyptic aggression that will sweep through a region, destroying anything in its path. Numbers of orcs are beyond estimation, then they'll swarm through a segmentum of space, exterminating everything in their path. Uh, that's you what could liken this to a locust speech, plague or a viral pandemic until it eventually burns itself out. A wag also refers to a psychic field that affects orc psyche. This is, again, as with all things orc, an instinctive state, enabling them to make simple observations of understanding. This applies to everything from designation of seniority, which again, don't overthink that, it's usually more akin to who is just bigger and therefore more right. Oh, look at the titan. Oh, I love that. Is that an emperor titan class? I don't know. I don't know that yet, but it looks so cool. That looks so cool. Oh, I love that picture. That's so badass. By the way, so the war, the warg is like a part of the same thing that the war was part of, I guess. Just a different thing. I don't know. All orcs generate this dull psychic field by default. It binds them together and helps their ramshackle culture function. The more orcs that are present, the stronger this shared psychic field becomes. And this is amplified through sheer numbers, or if they say are enjoying a really good bit of battle and smashing their enemies' faces in. The warg helps drive them, and you could think of Whoa! it as being akin to momentum, where past a point is just going to increase. A warg can begin on a small scale, sometimes as a small individual who may have some vision of great carnage and feel great. inspired to share yeah. with others by smashing their heads in until they get it. Or Beautiful. if he's imbued with a sense of tech skill, maybe he's going to create some giant gargant war machine that gets the blood and hype of his fellow orcs running high. The rumours of war and coming carnage spread like wildfire through the orcs, only exacerbating this sense of war. An orc war boss, who is simply a big powerful orc in command of his tribe, will usually rise to their aspired position through just basically beating the hell out of all around them until fellow orcs just get it that he's the biggest and the strongest. Yeah. His decisions will be enforced by a ruling caste of orcs known as knobs. And these are again a bigger than normal orc who will surely remind those below them of the fact at every opportunity with some casual violence. Yeah. War boss in a time of warg will assert himself through unsurprisingly more savage senseless violence towards his fellow orcs. Yeah. When war boss has not? created enough blunt trauma to be recognized as a powerful boss, he'll then be deemed an orc warlord. 
As his status spreads, more and more clans will come under his control, growing an unrelenting green mass of aggression. The mechs and brain boys will build ever more outlandish creations, <laughs> absurd in their brutality and genius in their creativity. Vicious yeah. war machines belching smoke and oil, poisonous vapors, acrid smoke, mobile fortresses, titanic war engines created from basically wow, that random looks sick. scrap metal and abandoned, twisted, that looks now so cannibalized sick. war engines. As the war boss grows ever stronger toward becoming the warlord, he will subsume his challenger's armies, with many of the orcs now seeking the sense of warg with a bloodthirsty insanity. Mech boys raise towers of warg, and gargants will start to be seen. Gargants, gargants. are the equivalent of imperial titans, uh, and so yeah. represent a world-ending level of firepower. These gargants are idols, or seen as avatars to the orc race, as manifestations of their gods, Gork and Mork. But world ending is not meant in like blowing up the planet, but like uh, scorching its surface, I guess. Because though the Titan in Hell's Reach was strong, it was like just a big, big gun thing. Like it could, yes, of course, it could shoot down a lot of stuff, but it wasn't a world ending thing. Like I didn't get the feeling from the Titan. What was it called? What was the Titan called? Stormbreaker? Stormbreaker was not something I would call world ending. And it, I think it was a big titan, so um, but I might have misunderstood that. So yeah, the, the these things here seem strong as well, but world ending, I don't know. I would say uh, uh, surface scorching perhaps. They are merciless weapon assemblies of sheer destruction. Gargants form no standard Gargans. pattern of design, as does barely anything in the orc way of creation. They are instead a random collection of parts and combinations of cannibalized war machines. So this how do you create chaotic nature figures of then builds if everything their is different? systems unreliable. Their whole design is haphazard and probably about as dangerous to the crew as to their targets on their battlefield. A clear difference between most orc war machinery and other races in the galaxy is they don't utilize guidance systems commonly. They also carry large crews of orc and the lower smaller race of Gretchen. They operate these war machines as a team, passing down orders as you might imagine a steamship of, say, the 19th century, calling down orders to the engine room and so on. That's so Directions cool. are significantly physically smaller than orcs, and so they're used to repair systems on the go by crawling into tight spaces. Gargants are usually weaker in terms of armor compared to Imperial Old Titans Lander. and relatively shorter range of weaponry. Stompa. However, Super they're still difficult to destroy <laughs> the because fuck? of the compacted, dense nature of their construction. There is one rare that variety above a normal Gargant known aptly as a Mega Gargant. <laughs> and this is essentially a mobile fortress running on tracks. Imperial Tales tell of so siege to cities, spending even as long as 18 months to construct these colossal machines of war. Returning to the apocalyptic warg, the continuous swelling of orc mobs starts to reach a critical mass. Ships and transport vessels are smashed together, and the orc armies reach a point of no return. This wave of violence now comes crashing down as the orc armies overflow with bloodlust, descending into battles that consume entire worlds. The Gargant idols further trigger the instinctive drives of the orc clans and tribes who will Great. do anything to outdo each other's destructive capabilities. At some point, this wave of fury and raging violence reaches its boiling point and the orcs begin to gather their great warg army. The ground shaking under the weight of tracked vehicles and striding walkers, the skies turn black from flyers, belching out blackened exhausts, and their ragged banners of brutality raising high atop these rusting, illogical contraptions of war. Orc yeah. wargs are very decentralized and have very little true coherency, even with a powerful war boss or warlord overseeing things. Various fragmented factions will exist in a warg, cults of speed, for example, whose principle is to go fast. Yes, Essentially, go fast. who love the thunderous roar of an engine, and if they can shoot some guns at the same time, all the better. Probably driving over and crushing some of their own kind in the process. Storm boys are elite so they are me and GTA. rockets on their back to make sure they're what? first into battle, charging with no thought much to the consequences. And this is actually Why? frowned upon by many so orcs to charge in under their own feet to get physically into the battle. 
Still, seeing a Storm Boy's volatile rocket pack malfunction go spinning off into an exploding disaster, certainly killing the pilot in the process, is great entertainment for the comrades on the ground. It is. And then, of course, you've got the mad force. These were orcs overwhelmed by the psychic energy of Warg. Uh, they look also at come with clans off. of orcs inhabit a planet and have to develop their own technology over generations of spawned orcs. Either way, mad boys don't coexist well with their kin. They're essentially best described as feral, which is saying something by orc standards. These feral, crazed orcs are also known as nutters, and they're grouped together into squads who will either be a secret tool to success when unleashed on the enemy, or a hindrance when they accidentally slaughter any fellow orcs they happen yeah. on. Once combat begins, mad boys coming. can still be some of the most savage fighters to an orc foe, or fellow orc alike, ripping them to pieces. Still, they're just as likely to sit in a whimpering huddle, unable to move overwhelmed by psychic confusion. No orc can tell exactly how they're going to behave, and making them an unpredictable and extremely dangerous force to bring onto the battlefield. I Along see. with their crudely smashed together spaceships and space hulk infestations, orcs have even been reported to convert asteroids into massive space fortresses, known as the That's uncreatively cool. titled rocks. The orc species is one of the most adept at making the best of their surrounding materials, That's and this so is the cool. genius and danger of That's their design. That's so cool. The old ones created the orcs with only two things in mind, making them deadly and to make them near impossible to exterminate. Orcs are a plague upon the galaxy to be sure, but not because of their skill in battle or because they spread insidious ideologies, but simply because they're so difficult to truly eradicate. Yeah. Humanity, for all of its technology and experience, often must resort to planetary exterminatus to be truly sure of destroying an orc infestation. Orcs defeat their enemies by either overwhelming them or wearing them down to a point of collapse with yeah. continuous losses in personnel Can't and materials, reach. simply by attrition. Orcs operate from a sheer antithesis of ordinary warfare. Usually any force will seek out decisive victories, utilizing minimal resources and seeking to limit casualties. Orcs, on the other hand, seek no limitation in casualties or resource management. Yeah, they don't they care. Have no Why would control they? over this, but to burn as hard and as fast as possible. And even when defeated, they will return to grind down whatever crumbling defenses remain of their enemy. The Warlord. Now, there are many individual stories and tales of orc warlords and bosses, as there are within the Imperium, Probably. various leaders, captains, and general history. In orc culture and history, you can't speak of the orcs without mentoning the warlord, Garskull, Marg, or Thraka. Is that the He's an orc one Yerig? Of the Goth clan, fought? and is an immense symbol of everything orc. Now, despite orcs being generally an anonymous mass of anarchy, he stands out as a powerful leader. He's commanded multiple campaigns and crushed most, if not all, in his sights, be they Imperial, Eldar, or Chaos. Wow. Smashed the metal skulls of the Necron into brittle scrap. Yeah. He has influence above that of any ordinary Orc Warlord. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I wondered about that because we mostly got information from him about uh, Orcs and humans and a bit of the Eldar, but the Necrons, which they were designed to destroy, so apparently they were effective against them as well, I guess? Or what, what, how was that? And is often described as a prophet of their gods. He travels the galaxy subjugating, slaughtering, and burning the enemies of the Orc. His vision is to wage a warg so immense as to summon the Orc gods out of the Immaterium and into the physical realm. And he extends their will. Yeah, okay, okay, I'm sorry, but... Immaterium is not the war warp, right? Immaterium is Immaterium the thing that the warp is part of, and the walk is part of, and the whatever thing that the um, the Tyrannus have is a part of. You know, it's the Immaterium is everything. Like, you know what I mean? Is is that it? Perhaps that's the thing. I know at least the way I understood it before is that Immaterium is the same as warp, but here it doesn't make sense. Because warp is clearly different from warp. So it's both part of the immaterium and the immaterium is the whole thing. But his beginnings were nothing of note, just another orc bashing in other orcs' brains to climb up the ranks. And originating on a planet known as Urk, 
originally Oracles, founded by humans during the Dark Age of Technology. Of Humanity course. prospered here, rich in mineral wealth, and with easy warp tides flowing for space travel, it was an excellent trade hub. Lights and noise attract attention. Resources make good mechs, and the orcs would become aware. Attacking with a voracious assault, the orcs would raise the planet before riding back into the warp tides. Oh, that looks so as badass. As with nearly all orc assaults, the departure wow, is not that as looks clean so cool. as it appears to be. They look They'd so leave cool, behind fungal spores, and the orcs would return in time. Other species would periodically form outposts on the planet. Sometimes the orcs would rise up, other times not. Sometimes they'd be destroyed, sometimes not. It wouldn't be until the Great Crusade of Mankind, though, that any humans would return here in numbers. The Dark Angel Space Marine Legion would lay claim to the world, and for 2,000 years, humanity would build, mine, and establish a functioning order on the reinstated world of Urkles. Uh oh. That was until around the 32nd millennium when a great orc warg swept through the system. Great. Humans were overwhelmed again and evacuated, fleeing into the warp. But its tides destabilized, and Urkles would be cut off and not easily reached by outside influence again for about 8,000 years. Wow. The orc tribes, however, remained, battling one another and fighting over the human ruins that remained. A state of genuine attrition was reached with various warbands fighting over ever-diminishing resources, none of them able to unite under a single just leader. It. Couldn't they just then eat each other? came Gazgol. Gazgol! One thing the Imperium had learned about the orcs, though, was that their wargs could be quashed if detected early enough. The Imperium would begin to deploy observation posts so as to best detect and monitor orc numbers and activity. And the Dark Angels monitored this as well as they routinely monitored human populations for potential recruiting planets. Okay. After the warp tides had calmed, the Dark okay. Angels were able to establish one such outpost on Urk so as to monitor this well-occupied orc planet. The orcs, however, desperate for any loot and resources, managed to discover this observation post and it was quickly overrun. At this time, Gazgul was just a goth's trooper in a warband, and during the frenzy to claim the base, he would be shot in the head by a bolter shell, a oh, devastating no. injury that would shatter his skull and pulp a section of his brain. That's unfortunate. Staggering back to his feet with immense toughness, he drew the respect of orcs around him, especially goths. Despite being a physical wreck, staggering and stumbling, his blood and brain spilling out into his own hands, they eventually found their way to a dock who would perform what I guess orcs deemed to be an operation. Dork. As is often the way with orcs, this was less a repair and more an improvement, an augmentation, and probably a bit- An augmentation. I'm sorry for that one. I mean, it, it was there, I picked it up, I made it. Stupid joke, I know. ...of an experiment. Gazgul so found sorry. that his skull and brain were now strengthened with bionics, squig sinew and adamantium plating. These physical alterations were great to be sure, but nothing compared to the vision he would see awakening from this augmentation. He would see a vision from Gork and Mork themselves <gasps> to lead orcs on the greatest, most yes. destructive and carnage reaping yes. wag that there had ever lead been. Them. It was his sole lead core them. belief that he had been in direct contact with his gods and that he was the chosen leader and the executor of their commands. He might have that, been. Or his brain got pulped by a bolt gun round through the skull. Either way, his purpose was clear and his resolve strengthened. Oh, is, is there a model for him? That's cool. So he's like a hero unit? Are there hero units? I don't know yet. Some people have uh, posted some links to the tabletop stuff and I will look at that, of course, soon as well, because I'm very interested. But this looks very cool. Like this could be a model of him because he's got the metal plate for a helmet head. As is often the way in orc culture, the whys and wherefores are not really relevant. It's the actions that count, and Gazgul's actions would be notable. Orc warlords began to fall immediately under his crushing will. The Death Skull's warlord Dregmech, with Gazgul barely minutes out of his surgery, the Death Skull's warlord would attack, unleashing a bullet storm that left Gazgul untouched by perhaps godly okay. intervention. Dregmech could not believe or his believe. eyes as Gazgul would stride forward, beating him into a bloody pulp, headbutting and smashing him to pieces as his mobs looked on. Rip. Some getting carried away in the violence, the cheering Gazgul on. Roaring from his victory, Gazgul declared himself the prophet of Gork and Mork. The prophet and of war! was his mere beginning. 
The word of Gaskell's brutality and power spread fast, and orcs flocked to join a band with yeah. a sense of purpose and direction, to be something more than the pitiful squabbling and clamouring for scraps that they'd become. The tales of a new boss touched by the gods with a vision for war was very appealing. His further battles with the evil suns and bad moons would be no less aggressive, but required more tactical sense, using burning fuels to shield his troops' approach or outwitting warlords through their sense of pride for their disposition, he was placed as an inevitable leader. Yeah. His subjugation of other warlords continued until he stood poised to do something no other orc warlord had done in 8,000 years unite the tribes on the unite planet. Unite the Earth. tribes! His domination of the planet was unquestioned, but the Gazgul had set his sights far beyond bringing together the orcs in inhabiting the his stars. Orcs. His words drove the orcs to their purpose, the warg beginning to form. Their energy attracting others, void ships began to arrive. For the first time in centuries, mechs worked together, building machines they never could have what imagined previously. Ship? But now with the energy and the power of the warg, I it think all just someone worked. Told me already, it was but... a miracle. The orc energies flowed as they riveted oh, together so giant cool. battle fortresses and mechs. Everything that occurred was the will of Gork and Mork, and Gazgul would declare every passing day, every achievement, every new ship arriving proved their quest was divine. Some of the orcs they were wondering how they were going to get so many of the orcs yeah. off the planet. They didn't have very many prophecy. flyers and no large ships to transport and begin Just their believe. war. Garsgall quickly silenced them. A solution would present itself. It was the will of Gork and Mork. Days later, the ever unpredictable tides of the Immaterium would shift again, and that rarest of occurrences would happen. A gigantic ancient space hulk would emerge from the war. Yeah, oh, that's so good. Gaskell cool. ordered tractor cannons and that's harpoon so rockets cool. on the few spacecraft that they had to secure the Hulk. Oh, they couldn't so guess as to how brilliant. long the I love warp it. would swallow the ancient ship, even with them holding it in place, and they needed to work fast. The Orcs rushed to assist in mech construction. They crafted as many transports and war machines as possible. Once they deemed enough was enough, they crammed as many Orcs into every possible space yeah. itself. This great just exodus got, from got their got backwater bro. planet filled the skies. Not without many mid-air collisions and engine failures as well, to be sure. So sad. Crashing into the Space Hulk's outer hull, some managed to make their way inside, some straight on ploughed into the vessel, and those with more sense sought out landing positions. <laughs> the Orcs soon discovered that they weren't alone on the Space Hulk, uh -oh. with wave after wave of demons spilling out of its oh, corridors. Great. Battling through the horrors, Gazgal and his band fought Ooh, through to the centre of the sick. Hulk, where they found, merged and jumbled by the warp, was the ship the Dominion. This was the vessel the humans had attempted to flee from the planet on some several thousand years ago, and seemingly it had been swallowed by the warp, its oh human no. occupants devoured by the demons as they lay trapped Great. in their vessel. The void rift that was spilling demons had to be closed, but Gazgul, after ordering his orcs to fire everything they had, was furious to discover it had no effect. His own weapon, even his own power claw, Eventually, with a massive headbutt and a flash of green light, that did the job, closing the door. Oh, of course, headbutt is. Seems <laughs> headbutt the portal, it always works. I see how it is. I now get it. Headbutt the portal. Like, don't, don't, don't do something that is reasonable. Just headbutt it. Likely, his latent psychic Brilliant. energy was what affected this in closing. It's so stupid, I love Before the orcs observing, it was only further imbued their belief that this warlord was a force like no other. Yeah, he headbutted Gazgol the portal. now named his conquered space hulk the orc warship World Killer. World Killer. That's cool. The ship would drift on for an undetermined period of time, in which the orcs would explore, loot, and generally rip off whatever they could find on board, cannibalizing the ship and using its materials to craft ever more powerful mechs and weapons. They appropriated everything they could lay their hands on and built everything they could lend their hands to. The best scrap would often lead to infighting and rivalry, all a positive thing for the orcs to keep their tensions and blood up. It would not be a quiet period though, travelling through the warp in such an unsecure vessel is dangerous and many times they'd be assaulted by further demonic incursions. And these assaults only further heightened the orcs' warg until the entire space hulk was seething with orc energies. Yes, more. Oh, it's so cool, I love that. The space hulk jolted and huge tremors swept across the ship. The world killer had shifted back into real space. 
Where, though? The Imperial Where? records date the emergence of the Space Hulk in the year 941M41. They were headed for the core planet of the star system, an Imperial world aptly named Armageddon. Oh, an industrial I high see. Planet where I see. <laughs> oh God, I see. <laughs> I see. Oh, that's so cool. Everything comes full circle. Everything comes full circle. Thousands of years of extensive industry had left it a barren wasteland with a totally collapsed ecosystem. Humans only survived in the concentrated hive cities that stood kilometers tall, and also in the Imperial military facilities stationed there. Food needed to be imported off-world, and no life existed outside of the hives. It contained multiple vast manufactorums, vital to munition supplies for the Astra Militarium. But with one of the most savage and relentless wargs ever seen headed straight for them... Oh, sorry, I, I just can't... I, I just... So cool that it's that walk. I didn't think it would be because I, I mean, it makes sense, but it's so cool that it's the walk that we already know or I already know from Hell's Rage. So, yeah, that's 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 oh, that's so cool. That is so good. I love it. I, that, oh, I'm so happy. It seemed like nothing was going to be able to stop the oh. world killer and its crew. The ship would head straight for the planet without stopping. The plan? There wasn't a plan. They would crash straight into the planet. Gaskell was literally on a collision course with his destiny. Caught off guard, nearby Imperial fleets and the planet's defences did what they could to slow the assault, but this only chipped away at the massive space. Yeah, that, that makes sense now. Taking minimal effective damage, it ploughed straight into the planet's polluted atmosphere, crashing with obvious devastation onto its surface. Even though many thousands of orcs would be turned to ashes on impact, yeah. this is but a tiny percentage of their total force. And then they start. To the survivors, Gazgul seized this opportunity. It is the will of Gork and Mork that we survive, he would proclaim. The orcs now twice as pumped up, having survived their world-ending crash into the planet, would be a force none would wish to reckon with, and Gazgul quickly divided his massive army into five hordes, with leaders that he'd subdued and recruited to his cause back on Urk. They'd now stepped forth, millions of orc. Yes! But one voice. I have seen them. The human defenders weren't prepared for this. They had many forces, war gear and munitions, but the sheer scale of the violence and ferocity they were met with was of nothing they'd dreamt of in their worst nightmares, which in the 41st millennium is certainly saying something. Yeah. This was not an ordinary orc warg. This was Garsgård Thracker's warg. The orcs showed expectedly no mercy at any instance, and they defeated the humans on the wastelands with their speeders and battle wagons, yeah, ruined enemy supply lines and cut down anything that moved. And they quickly turned their attention to structures that they had never seen before. These hive cities, taller than mountains, industry and engineering on an imperial scale. The mechs stood in awe. So much scrap they would have So learned. much scrap. At the first hive they encountered, despite the Imperium putting up a formidable defense at Hive Volcanus, heavily fortified, this would take all of Garsgill's cunning. He had his gargants, but he wanted to take this city with orcs on the ground, scorching, burning, Great. and leaping through the trenches. Yeah. The orcs would smash, crush, and break this city. Using his visionary choices of units, Gazgill crushed the human defenses quickly, and on breaking the gates, unleashing a wave of infantry. His will was executed perfectly, a tall order for an orc war. Desperate humans resorted to guerrilla warfare, but despite yeah, much course. heroism, the orcs swept through like a plague, slaughtering and enslaving its occupants. Its manufactorums were quickly converted to orc workshops. Human slaves oh, turned to stripping the, their city. The every second scrap war of Hell's Bridge, not the third one. More I don't, I don't know. Now, on the planet of Armageddon, one human stood out from the general perception of the orc. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I see. It's the first. I think it's the like. Officially the first, but the second war on uh, Hell's Reach, uh, on Armageddon. So now we get to Yerik. Hello Yerik, my old friend. As a weak and puny race, Commissar Sebastian Yerik. Yerik! He drew unusual respect from the Orcs, not my least man. because he wore goth colours of the black and red, but also sporting an augmented power claw and bionic eye. This was a human the Orcs could get on board with. 
Yeah. Even more so when they learned from enslaved humans that they often feared Yarrick as much as they feared their other enemies. Yarrick known for shooting disobeying soldiers out of hand. Orcs upon seeing him in battle though were often disappointed to see he wasn't quite as big as they'd imagined and he was only a human sized figure. Oh well, he was an uncompromising warrior nonetheless. So perhaps the orcs powered him up as well through the stories they heard. That's so cool. Yarrick was the man credited with withstanding the orc assault on Hive Hades for a significant period of time. Yeah. This assault brought the Armageddon War to a new level of brutality. The orcs had already sacked two Hive cities and Hades stood next in line. The Imperium in desperation would launch virus bombs devices not used since the time of heresy against the orcs. Yeah. And even though hundreds of thousands of orcs would perish, it wasn't enough. Garsgol wanted Hades, and he would direct the assault himself. He tried everything he could think of, growing ever more frustrated all the time. But all his traditional assaults would fail time and time again. Eventually, he summoned his weird boys to use their wild weird boys. minds to blast a psychic storm at the hive. Consumed by madness, the human defenders fell apart, but still the humans couldn't be defeated. The orc flyers were ripped apart by anti-aircraft fire, tunnel fighters cut their orcs trying to advance underground to pieces, yeah. and the human suicide assault squads took down the immense orc gargants. All this would be Commissa Yarrick's doing. Yeah. Yarskull by now had become fixated and obsessed with bringing down Hive Hades. His vision and judgement clouded by the frustration and needing to bring it down. While still battling this bitter assault, he would direct an orc horde to assault another hive city, Acheron. Perhaps in the hope to divert resources away or gain a oh, victory I need to hear the name energy. But then, they can't place the worst this possible development for the orcs. Orbital bombs rained from the sky as roaring space marine thunderhawks would sweep down into the planet the Blood Angels, Ultramarines, and Salamanders. The Emperor's chosen yeah, warriors okay, were here to defend Armageddon. It's the, yeah. Gazgul was still so yeah, blinded the by second, fury it's efforts the war to defeat know, Yarrick the and Hades, one. he was unable to think with clarity enough to counter the arriving Space Marines. He would throw everything he had to take down his obsession, breaking in the blast doors of Hades in a final rampage. The Space Marines would be too late to save Hive Hades, its citizens, massacred. With Gazgul's numbers now though severely depleted and loosely scattered across the planet, he consolidated his last reinforcement to a new hive, Tartarus. The oh, planet of stood course. at a crossroads I remember that one even as well. with the arrival of the Space Marines. They would deploy even as the Orcs began their assault with mechs, stompers and even Gorkons. Oh, yeah. The battle though was not in the Orcs' favour, but then Gazgul himself arrived. The orcs could taste things were turning for them. But then just as quickly as he arrived, he'd gone. Where Chattered did he go? Quickly through the orcs that the war boss had fallen. They began to waver to break, and the Imperium crushed the remaining orcs, driving them from Armageddon. Yeah. Where did he go? The orcs thinking Gazgul had fallen in battle was not so. Gazgul was not slain, but he did disappear from the battlefield. Rumours spread that the Hand of Gork had plucked him from the battlefield, and his detractors would say fled, usually to be met with a swift headbutt from a nearby orc <laughs> putting them in their place. Of course. However, it did happen. Gazgul had escaped. Why? After Armageddon, Gazgul did not rest. As with most orcs, defeat is not really a thing, it's just a stumble, a setback, the chance to have another go. Yeah. This was the beginning for him in his larger journey, a plan of Gork and Mork. Yarrick recommended the Imperium hunt down this brutal oh, war boss and eliminate him once and for all. But the Imperium assumed him dead or defeated and didn't want to spend the resources or time to locate an orc they were sure that that was the last they'd see of. Nah. This was a grave error of judgement, as is often the case with most things in the Imperium. <laughs> that dick though. To the Imperium's mind, his wag had failed, and therefore, even if he did survive, orcs would not look upon him for leadership with his energy deflated. After losing a battle, while orcs will happily try try again, they'll often topple their leader as is their natural order of Yeah, of course. But not so with Gazgul. While he may have had to defeat several challengers in brutal fashion after he regrouped with various orc tribes to remind them just who he was, he would begin gaining new followers again. 
curiously for an orc, not just with his actions, but with his words. To him, the invasion okay. of Armageddon had been a starting point, a testing of the enemy to find their strengths and their weaknesses. A large-scale yeah, intelligence sure. gathering, orc-style, leaving millions dead and burning cities in its wake. Yeah, why in not? This, they gained much useful information. Now Gazgul knew about Imperium strategies. He would regroup, rebuild, and restore his prophetic warg. He would reveal to his fellow orcs, in order to destroy your enemy, you must know him. You must so the orcs, know him. this is about as profound as it gets, enemy. and their spirits would reignite. The second coming of Gazgul Thraker was only a matter of time. Yeah. Okay, that was it. Um, very, very cool video. Very informative. I, I really like the, the very long story in the end. Like, that was hype. Because it was, I think that was the, the, the one I know from Hell's Reach, the invasion. And please correct me if I uh, uh, did not get that correctly. But as far as I know, that's the invasion we are familiar with through Hell's Reach which was so cool when I realized that that was like one of my favorite things ever. Um, though I have to say it could have been a, its own video. Like I really enjoyed it. And uh, yeah, but I'm a bit salty because I still don't know what crocs are yet. They were the precursors. Like what, what happened? How did they develop? What happened there? Does no one know? I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, I hope you enjoyed this reaction. Um, yeah, let, let's comment on this video. Um, to 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 give him some love uh yeah so let's see what will we do that was a very cool video very cool very cool cool so uh, always uh thank thank the thank uh, luton thanks for the video it was very informative and fun as well yeah it was a very very good video very good video. I already liked it before I started this. Um, yeah, like, like this was, uh, yeah, this, this was very cool. Very cool. So now I did the long video on the orcs. I, I hope uh, you were pleased with it. I loved it. Like, it was very funny. Um, I, I love the drawings. The drawings were very cool. I think I understand the orcs a bit better, though. Like, um, the other video was still okay-ish, like it was a bit like, the, I think the, the biggest fault with the other video I watched um, from Major Kill was that I didn't know what the walk was and he was just shouting into my ear and was stupid, but here now I know it. Now I will happily shout it myself when I get to the orcs. And uh, yeah, so what shall I do next? I am thinking about doing something about the Primark next. Um, oh yeah, and by the way, um, I will do SCP reactions, but only like once a month because I'm curious about it and I want to know more about it. Like I know some stuff, but so we will do some of that, but not too much because people right, rightfully pointed out that I don't have that time. Unfortunately, I would love to have the time, but uh, I have to go to work and uh, stuff like that. And uh, I want to be with my family as well. So, you know, time time's uh, a bit of an issue sometimes. So I will not do SCP that much. Uh, but I will probably do, I will not probably, I will do it, but I don't know when I will do the Event Horizon uh, reaction. And uh, yeah. Also, again, if you like horror stories, check out uh, my new horror story in my horror story universe, which, um, yeah, I put some uh, Warhammer 40k references into it. So it might, cannot, might, um, might be part of the Warhammer universe in uh, present time. I don't know. It's just some fun stuff. If you want to check it out, uh, there's a great, great uh, uh, reading of that by a great person. And I will just link it uh, here again. I don't know. And anyway, I hope you have a great day. Um, and uh, now that I have moved and I hopefully will get my green screen back soon and set it up, we will uh, do the normal stuff again. And uh, yeah, as always, please take care of yourself and uh, see you soon. Bye.